Trey Thompson. What do you tell people when they ask where you're from? How you describe it? I say a small town, like 25 minutes outside of Macon. Then I'll come to like Thomaston, Georgia, for the simple fact of not many people going to know where it's at. It's home to me, but a lot of people still want, like, even if I try to explain it to them, they still want to know what it, where it is. You see the same people every day, like you go to school, you see the same people in school every day. You get out of school, you got a little routine, you go to the store after school, like you go see the same exact people every day. When I was young, I always wanted to get away from here just for the simple fact that it's not, not really many businesses or fun activities to do other than just doing something I'm not supposed to be doing. Being raised in this small town, I have to say, it was obviously my family who put the most into me. Everybody in the town knows me, shows support, been showing support ever since I was a little kid. And I'm very appreciative of it. All the years, okay. um, yeah, and this is more basketball here. Okay. He was pretty good, but I had to stay on him, you know, with grades, you know, make sure you you maintain nothing lower than a B. Yeah, he was good. He was just a boy. He was just like the average little brother, just get on our nerves, already, you know, growing bigger than me, just being a little brother. Nothing too major. You would catch me always trying to fight them. Yeah, you know, like to let them know, like, I'm still big sister. Like, and I'm bigger than me, back, but, like, yeah. it's not my battle. Today. I watch. She never get in the middle. Mm -mm. He, he thought he was in charge. He was the youngest, and he didn't want them to, to treat him any different, and he was going to have to show them that he was the man of the house when I wasn't here. He nagged them all the time, all the time. They would fuss, fight sometimes, but yeah, he nagged them, got on their nerves. And it still happens today that way, so yeah. <laughs> I was probably about seven when they first start Rick. Yeah, he was really good. Uh, he played quarterback, uh, running back, whatever they needed, he played it. Well, I would look out the window or be out in the yard and he's, you know, going through some little drills of his own, so I'm like, well, maybe he's gonna do it on his own and I don't have to just stay on him all the time. He was always the biggest kid out there. We had parents complaining because he was so much better than the other kids. So they said that he, he couldn't play with those little kids, but he was playing in his age group. And just like his personality, it just kind of set him apart. You know, usually you see a big kid, they're bullying and doing all this to the other players, but it's just like, it just came naturally to him. He tries to come home probably more, well, he tries to come home more than I want him home. Don't get me wrong, love him, want him here. Uh, but he tries to come home as much as possible. He, he definitely wants to pour back into the community to do things that he didn't have the opportunity to do here. Here we go. One little blueberry fell onto the ground. Blueberry, you see it? One little, one little blueberry. Two tiny red ants spied it from their mouth. And while the bugs fought over who would get the yummy prize, a bird swooped down and ate it. Goat, right before the eyes. The end. You bigger from the last time you was here? Still look the same. Ain't that chain? What's up? You know what? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Hi. Hey. <laughs> it was always a part of me that want to be able to give back to my community. Being raised in this small town, everybody Build as a community helping raise you as well, so I feel like that played a big part in it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember no days. 
try to be that. I know you're home a lot, but just try to be that, you know, show your face and be like, hey. Like, Almost different. Like, I still, like, when I come home, I still pop up. I might pop up somewhere everywhere. Like, if they, people see me riding through town, they go, I'll roll the one. If we had a red light, I'll roll the one down. We'll have a little short conversation at the red light or whatever. But whatever I can do, to be always, I've never been a selfish person. So whatever I can do to help somebody else, especially in my community, I'll do it without question. Every time. every time. Every time. If they know I'm here, it's like this every time. Like every time. Oh. That would come with it though. So I ain't complaining. It's a blessing. Small country time. Not too major. It's my main stomach ground right here though. Stadium. I read this where I mainly spent most of my time. Stadium and basketball court, that's it. I knew him in, in middle school when you heard about him coming up through rec league. He was just physically bigger than everybody and really athletic for, for his size. He was just excited about seeing him, seeing him grow and was ready for him to get to us. He was fast as for a big guy whenever he was at Upson Lee. It was just amazing when his burst, when he decided to go, how much faster he was than everybody else. We tried to use him as much as we possibly could, get the ball to him as much as we possibly could while we had him. And say catch a BB in the dark, his hands were unbelievable. He made so many catches over, just over people. He made an interception, a one-handed interception. It was back behind him and then he just one-hands it, never, never slows down. And, and I remember turning to the guys on the sideline, I said, he's playing on Sundays. There's no doubt, he's just special. Obviously he was super successful on the football field, but I feel like he kind of learned to be a winner on the basketball court. Well, I'll tell you this, um, during our games, he just, he just dominated. He just dominated the paint. Defensive line that didn't want to shoot, so we had to make him shoot the ball for the last couple of years because he, he could score. Yeah, he made layups, but we stressed him a little bit, started hitting jump shots. And that's his attitude. I'm going to take care of my business and then help everybody else out. Any leftovers, I'll take them. Black and Silver finding the open man down low, put up and in, and the foul. Too big, too strong, too good. He was comfortable playing with the guys that he played with, and they did what they, they had to do. And in turn, they started winning games, start winning games, start winning games. It just kept going. Here we go right here, back to back. I'm on the right here on the front of this ball. I don't know where I'm at on that ball. I got it. The e teams right here are special though. It'll probably never be a team like that come through us again. Just the <laughs> chemistry we had. Every game we probably didn't have like the best players all around, but you know what I'm saying? We had the chemistry, yeah. so wasn't nobody really messing with us. like basketball the best, I kind of feel like you did. Basketball is definitely my first love. It came a lot more easier to me. I never trained for basketball, but I always was good at it. Winning right. state championships in my high school career played a big part of me going to the University of Georgia. I always had that the will to win. I always been around winning, so it just carries over to the next level. And that carries over to me being a leader as well. That's crazy, I wrote this, I wrote this right here. I don't know how long you control what you can control. That been out there for a while. You really wrote that? Yeah. That's why. Yep. This was my locker right here though. We really just chose whatever locker we wanted to, for real. I really could have had all the lockers if I wanted them. This 
my life now. I saw the struggle between basketball and football. I saw, I saw that. You know, he loved basketball. I think he even loved basketball more than he did football. But from my standpoint, I, I, I knew from day one that he would be a football player. I didn't push him on the issue. I just, I just did what I could, and he did what he could on the floor, and everything else just took care of itself. Folks filled up the auditorium here in Thomaston, and the media filled in as well, all to see Trayvon Walker commit to the G. First of all, I would like to thank God for blessing me with the opportunity to go play collegiate ball. Second of all, I'd like to thank my parents for molding me to be the person I am. Thank my teammates, coaches, and family members in my community for sticking behind me through the whole process. With that being said, I'll be taking my talent to I knew he was going to pick Georgia. I knew. Because he always said he wanted to be a Bulldog. We had talks. We had various talks um, throughout throughout that t time. And, you know, my, my words to him was mostly at some point in time, you're going to have to choose what you feel will be best for you. I have my opinion. You have your opinion. But you're going to be the one that's going to actually have to go through with it. Well, I'm the one that I, I kind of nudge. And I'm like, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? But he never really just says anything. He kept it all to himself. It took a lot off of us. Like, well, darn, where is he going? Mm -hmm. You know, we just waited patiently. And then finally he called one day and said, well, look at your phone. Yeah. And I had to pull over because I'm the one. I'll cry. <laughs> so I pulled over and I watched the video. And I cried, of course, for a long time. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Hey, in 2017, my coach suffered a massive heart attack. He's the picture of strength, and today's the day. I'm so thankful he's here for me to tell him where I've committed. I will be attending the University of Georgia. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Congratulations. Thank you for everything. Yes, sir. Thank you for everything. It's emotional for everybody, but it's in to them to, to include Coach Parks even at that time. Just says a lot about them and the, him and the family. Coach Parks, you know, he spent time with him. He took him to camps. Uh, he made a difference. He made a difference in his life. They had a great relationship, and and Coach Parks was just a he was just a super guy. Great coach, great motivator. It was hard not to to be close to Coach Parks when you're around him. Like to you know, while he was still around, tell him that that's really wrong. Coach Parts to me, like he was one of those guys that he never, he never fed me information that I wanted to hear. He always told me what I needed to hear. He was a person who really just showed me how to go about real life and showed me really how to play the game of football the correct way. And I just felt like it was only right to, you know, what I'm saying, let him know, be one of the first ones to know that out. That's what I was going to be because he brought that relationship. He brought that relationship with me and Kirby. Go, go. I went out to a camp with Coach Park. He always worked camps with Kirby. Once we were leaving that camp from uh, Alabama, he was like, Kirby's about to get a uh, head coaching job at Georgia. And literally like a week later, we get back from the camp. And I get a call to the athletic director's office and Kirby's on the phone. And he saying he's at Georgia at the time. So he fresh off Alabama and he offered me it. So that was my first office. I was nine times out of 10, I was going to always go to how old were you at, 13, 14? Uh, so this was my ninth grade year. I was actually playing behind somebody who was a senior who was committed to Georgia. And they already called him. Macon brought down. That is Walker with the set. Talk about freakish athleticism. When I first put the Georgia uniform on, it was, it was a surreal moment. That was something I always grew up knowing I wanted to be in that position. And then once that time came, it was like, man, I'm really in Sample Stadium in front of 93,000. It was just electrifying being able to play for the University of Georgia. Set to fire again, or really? He's not going to get it off. He's set that time by Trayvon Walker. The crowd was, oh, it was ecstatic. I've never seen anything like it before. It was, 
it was like a dream come true because I know that that was just the beginning. Yeah. That was the beginning of everything. We are here in the city of sin getting set for an NFL draft in the home of the Raiders. And it is time for the 2022 NFL draft. Draft night. That's the happiest I've seen him in a long time. He probably had close to 100 friends and family. Bought him dinner and had a, had a nice meal. And uh, he wanted to include everybody. You know, he wanted people that had impacted his life to be able to be with him that night because it was a special event, a special night. He's kind of shy, like me. You know, he just don't want to be in the spotlight. And I think being at the draft, he would have been like in the spotlight. And he just wanted to share it with his family, low key, and just enjoy us. All right, here we go. The 2022 NFL Draft is now officially open. You know, as a mother, you know you want your child to be in the top. But, you know, people were saying late second, maybe even early third. So I was kind of nervous for him because I knew he wanted to be in the top. My words to him was wherever, wherever you land, that's where God wants you to be, and, and you're gonna do the best wherever you, wherever he puts you. you. Just be prepared wherever it is, so you, I know you're gonna fit in, I know you're gonna do well, you just gotta grind as soon as you get there. To be 100% honest, I was still, I was learning about the draft, so it was just more so that we're here. I'm excited just to be here, whether he went one or 100, it was, the fact that he was able to do it is just, that was exciting to me, you know. And I always thought just to have like my parents, my grandparents there just being able to witness it. Hello. Trayvon, Coach Peterson. How you doing? I'm great, how are you? Doing good, can't complain now. Not complain now, I hear you brother, I hear you. I'm so, so fired up to make you a Jacksonville Jaguar. Looking forward to working with you, man. So proud for yes, you sir. and your family, it's a great, it's a great time. In that moment, like I'd rather spend that time with my family, with the people who've been pushing me, who've been behind me ever since day one. I've accomplished a lot throughout my career. I'm enjoying the process now, but like if it was all stripped away from me today and like I didn't have this opportunity anymore, like my family is what keeps me going. I just wanted to make sure I was around people who had genuine feelings for me. pulled up, I looked at him, I said, son, uh, welcome to your new office. Get your butt out and get to work. Don't be looking back at me. And I pushed him out the door and he's like, dad, I'll get out. Hey, How you doing? How are you? Welcome to Jackson. Yes, sir. Glad to be here. <laughs> Going through the process that day, uh, meeting the, the staff and everyone, that's when I said, okay, you're here. And I said, but you're not there yet. I said, when you sign the papers, then you're really there. This is just, you know, you're, you're about to walk in, open the door and look at where you're going to be once you've signed the papers and this is where you are. Wanna set the edge? That's it. Well, thank you for, uh, for being here uh, this afternoon. And, um, you know, we're excited obviously to introduce Trayvon to you guys and somebody that, that can really come in and help and make an impact right away. Very talented individual, but I think more than, more than that, when you get to know him uh, as, a, as a person, as a human being off the field as well. For me, like it's not about living up to the expectations because it's something that I've been doing ever since I was a little kid. So I just feel that once I get the opportunity, just maximize my opportunity that I have and do my best, and do my best at it. Trayvon Walker, his first NFL game. Rector's coming, Tannehill lost the football. Swung around and taken down by Trayvon Walker. 
Trayvon Walker. Trayvon Walker's really coming on. You've seen it throughout the season, and he just continues to get better. Throw the ball, make them get. Don't just keep running good, inside. Man. Keep running the same yeah. play over and over. Yeah, yeah. Gotta be able to switch it up. They go, that's how they gonna be studying. Yeah. Like they inside. Here, here. Mm. And he sprayed. When they, when they turn, when you know when you're right here and they rolled away from you. If he ever come to you like, if he ever come to you like that, you might as well just hit the beat guy. I know you got to get contained, but if he rolling away from you, you might as well just hit the beat. Yeah, quick away to the quarterback instead of trying to run all the way around and fight, fight through it. You feel? Me? Uh, he went inside though. I told that him, why he he bull rushing the hell out of the first time. That's why, that why I told him. I told him to take that inside. Cause bro, I ain't doing nothing but did right here. Turning to him the whole time. I just told him, don't take the inside every time. But pray with that. Pride to show the old quarterback. Huh. Come on, baby, baby. Come on, get to him, baby. Definitely got to. Six six. I tell you. Four, four, seven. Seven. four seven. You gonna get up there? What up? What's up? What's up? Oh, you doing a football camp? Yeah, you gonna be there? Yeah. Say that. We gonna have some fun. We gonna turn up. We gonna. You gonna be there? Where? At the camp. Yeah. Say that. Yeah, what camp? Huh? Tyreek Hill. My camp. Tyreek Hill had one, but I didn't sign up for it. Uh, you gonna be at mine? We ain't know. worried about Tyreek Hill. I don't know. Another one. Huh? Wow. Two toe. Pancake, it right? Pancake, bro. You ain't gotta say no sir to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's about sir. And that's the end of the first half. It gives me great pleasure this evening to begin the Jersey retirement ceremony for our very own Brave Honestly, I'm honored to be asked to speak. I love Trayvon and his family. Nowhere else I'd rather be. This is really neat to me that you're going to launch your platform tonight, your foundation. Because I told you you were going to have a platform where you could inspire and impact others. That very few people in this world are ever going to have a chance to do. Especially from Thomas and Upson County. And it's awesome that it's happening tonight. Every time I see you, your graciousness and your humility and your humbleness is evident. You hadn't changed the lick. Matter of fact, I like to say, your head needs to get smaller and your heart needs to get bigger. Your heart's gotten bigger and your head's gotten smaller. There's no ego there, man. You're awesome. First and foremost, I'd like to thank God. Uh, it's definitely an honor to be presented to retire my jersey is something that I never even thought about happening. You all have all poured a lot into me throughout numerous years of playing sports. Uh, you always support it, and I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you to the, thank you, Coach Cavan, University of Georgia. Thank you, Coach Block, Early Rec League. Thank all you all. Can't forget about none of y'all. And Coach Parts as well. Uh, without Coach Parts, he's definitely, he was one of the ones that helped me get my exposure to start off with my recruitment process. He, he really put me in this, helped put me in this position to be great, and I really appreciate everybody. Go Knights. I'm just proud and, and happy for Trayvon. We're gonna have this picture up, up in that thing forever. A lot of people ask me, when are we going to have another team like that? I, you know, another team maybe, but not another Trayvon. He's doing it. He's doing it. He's, he's being who he was set out to be. Yeah. He's his own individual and a nice young man now. A big, nice young man. But, hey, he's doing his thing. Just wanted to, to stay grounded to stay, stay focused, uh, keep God in his life. 
first and just go out and be all that he can be, be the best that he can be.